scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Amen. Lift your hands and worship Him. Is the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Amen. Who is the King of glory? Who is the King of the Lord strong and mighty? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. You're declaring over your life and over your destiny. Amen, 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 amen. Every word spoken by the Lord. His words are yea and amen. Promises, yea and amen. Someone declare as an act of faith. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. Amen, 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 amen. One more time. Father, give me an encounter tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Cry from the depth of your heart. Give us an encounter, an encounter by your spirit. Someone declare, change my life, change my life. Let me go from strength to strength because I've appeared before the Lord even in Zion. Someone pray. My situation will never be the same. My spiritual experience will never be the same. Wisdom is coming unto me tonight. Understanding is coming unto me tonight. My heart is open and large, ready to receive. Are you declaring? Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Take a minute or two to pray. Take a minute or two to pray. Make faith declarations by the Spirit. Tonight is an extraordinary service for me. Receiving wisdom, impartation of all kinds of graces. That affliction over my life gives way once and for all. The Bible declares that now the Lord is that spirit 
and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty there is liberty where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty fix your eyes on jesus as you pray where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty Shabaka paruka toshka prende ke berekos Shkate paraka te frakata paraka ta prende ke bereketos Shake away unbelief in the name of Jesus Christ Shake away unbelief tonight is my night For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Father, we thank you because it is unto you that our gathering is tonight. And we pray and thank you and trust you that our lives will never be the same. For your word declares that they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the lord even in zion we have come grant us wisdom let tonight be a night of impartations let tonight be a night of healings let tonight be a night of deliverances and i'm praying in the name of jesus that no burden here represented will remain at the end of this service for in jesus mighty and matchless name we have prayed Amen and amen. Say hello to someone by your left and right and please be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. As I was on my way coming here, I saw something that I just thought to attend to. I saw a woman with a child and that child has been sick. I don't know what that situation is the, that that vision came to me twice and i just thought before we go to the word let me just speak over I, I saw a woman with a child i don't know it was not given to me to know exactly what the situation is but i know that the child is sick in the name of jesus christ this is the place of his power this is a place of his grace this is a place where his spirit has unrestrained access and for that woman wherever you are and your child whether you're here on site or across the globe wherever zaria and any other of our expressions across the globe i just want you to lay your hands on that child whether it's a baby whether it's an infant doesn't matter just lay your hands father you reveal to redeem and in the name of jesus christ I declare by the power of the Holy Spirit that every affliction, every yoke, every infirmity upon that child in the name that is above all names, let there be healing now. Amen. Let there be perfection now. Amen. Let there be quickening now. Amen. And I use this child as a point of contact to speak already to anyone here. In the name of Jesus, you came here with any infirmity. Every service is a miracle service. In the name that is above all names. I'm praying right now. Lay your hands wherever it is that you're trusting God for a miracle. Whether it's your head, whether it's a blood condition, whilst you're seated, you can stand in for someone. Make sure you are believing. Whether you are outside, inside, wherever, following online. In the name of Jesus. Father, I stretch my hands even by the authority of your name, ministering to every sick body. In the name that is above all names, I declare that the spirit that is back of this infirmity is hereby cursed this moment. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I declare unto you, let there be healing now. I bring you the healing power of Jesus. I bring you the balm that is in Gilead. Be healed right now. 
from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet and for someone I prophesy to you that sickness is not unto death in the name of Jesus that sickness is not unto death in the name of Jesus Christ thank you father we receive healing in Jesus mighty name we have prayed in the same vein I want us to just whilst we're seated to lift our hands to heaven and thank the Lord for his manifold wonders even in our midst go ahead and tell him thank you we lay to heart to be grateful for extraordinary miracles extraordinary manifestations of your spirit we lay to heart to say thank you is someone saying thank you thank you for my life i want you to contemplate on the goodness of god in your life for one moment look at your former self and your now self even being transformed and tell him thank you it is unto you thank you by your wisdom thank you by your power thank you thank him for this great vision thank him for all that he is doing in and through our lives across the globe is someone saying thank you we lay to heart as a people to be grateful thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus when you are thoughtful you will be grateful Lord thank you for your manifold blessings upon my life thank you thank him for your family children spouse thank him for the works of your hands thank him for preserving you take this as part of the service let gratitude come from your heart unto the king of kings unto the lifter of men unto the deliverer unto the healer unto the promoter unto the one who empowers men unto the one who opens doors unto the one who averts evil upon men unto the one who preserves men even in famine go ahead and pray it says i slept and i waked for the lord sustained me father we bless you we bless you we bless you we lay it to heart to say thank you thank you for koinonia global thank you for all connected to this spiritual family across the globe thank you for your manifold works all oh, that men would praise the lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works even unto the children of men thank you to jesus be all the praise hallelujah praise the name of the lord never become too familiar with the doings and the dealings of God in your life sometimes we take for granted the hand of God upon our lives hallelujah the Bible says let it not be that when you have built houses you have had this and that that you will say my power and the might of my hand has gotten me this he says but thou shall remember the Lord your God because it is easy to forget hallelujah bless the Lord oh my soul he says and all that is within me bless his name he says bless the Lord oh my soul and forget not his benefits hallelujah and so as a family of faith we choose to say thank you to Jesus the one who is responsible for any and everything that men celebrate in our lives one more time say thank you Jesus amen the believer in Christ is destined to be a sign and a wonder upon the earth. I will emphasize this for your hearing, for your knowledge, that every believer, listen, in the dealings of God with men, there is such a thing as the election of grace, whereby his predeterminate counsel, he has chosen, preordained certain people to occupy certain spaces in life and destiny and in prophecy. However, in God's dealing with men, the grace of God is rich unto all. The Bible says the same Lord is rich unto all. In other words, every believer in Christ is destined to be a sign and a wonder that your life and your Christian experience should cause men 
to celebrate the hand of God should cause men to know Jesus, should cause men to desire him. Like Paul calls us living epistles, that when men look at your life, I would always say that they, your life becomes a continuation of their Bible study, that they use your life and the excellency of the dealings of God in your life to learn God the more. Hallelujah. And the house of God is that authorized platform where believers are mentored. Please listen. Believers are groomed to become matured, number one, in the knowledge of Jesus Christ and then in the knowledge of the kingdom. That means every time we gather for service, we must have it as the, at the back of our minds as responsible believers that we have come for the purpose of growth, for the purpose of maturity, for the purpose of empowerment, and then all other expressions of the Spirit that can happen when He's allowed to find expression in the midst of His people, the healings, the deliverances, the breakthroughs. But in order of priority, every time you come to the house of God, it is a time for learning, for growth, to access more superior dimensions of wisdom, to understand scripture and to draw from scripture the life that is contained therein. And if you believe that will be your testimony tonight, shout a loud amen. amen. Maybe I should add this also, that the value of the anointing, the value of the anointing in the life of the believer the excellency, the value of the anointing in the life of the believer is truly revealed when that believer is transformed. Are we together? That means when a believer contends for power, for anointing, without transformation, the bankruptcy of transformation can downplay the extent or the power of the, 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 the degree of impact that the anointing upon him should produce. The anointing coming upon a believer partners with his transformation for maximum result. Let me take it again. That the anointing of the spirit that comes upon a believer works in partnership with your transformation in order to yield. That means it is possible that you can have a heavy anointing upon your life, be it a healing anointing, a prophetic grace, and it can yield 30-fold, it can yield 60-fold, it can even yield a hundred-fold, pending on your degree of transformation. In fact, two people can have the same level of anointing, the same level of anointing, but their results will differ because for one person in addition to that anointing or in preparation for that anointing he or she contended for transformation whilst the other person may have been careless and you just received the anointing without transformation hallelujah are we learning now so transformation is very important very very important when the power of god flows from and through a transformed vessel, then you are able to see the full extent of what his power can do. So Jesus focused more on the transformation of the believers. The empowerment came. You see, the empowerment is sudden, but transformation is not sudden. Are we together? In one moment, you can receive an impartation, and that's it. But transformation is a process because you have to partner with the word of God for your mindset and your orientation to now to transcend certain realms to certain higher realms. It says, come up hither and I will show you. You will not see it from that plane. Come up hither and I will show you the things that will happen thereafter. Hallelujah. It's some more learning. And when it has to do with the business of transformation please listen nobody graduates from the school of growth and transformation nobody graduates from the school of growth and transformation there are certain aspects of the kingdom life where you can call men masters but when it has to do with transformation there is always a more superior version of you calling you are we together now 
it was um, um, there were three categories of people in the Bible that Apostle John wrote to he wrote to children he wrote to young men and he wrote to fathers I write to you children I write to you young men I write to you fathers so he acknowledged that within the larger scope of the body of Christ there are these three categories of people children children are those who he's not just talking of physical people there is the biological expression also children as children as you know young men as young men as you know and then fathers or elders as elders using the index of age but then spiritually speaking there are children infants those who just got saved and are now beginning their journey to growth and maturity then there are young men those who are now they have explored the kingdom to an extent and they are enjoying the benefits and the blessings that have come they have energy they have zeal and there are fathers those who have worked with God for a while they have a track record he says I write to you that means there is something children can learn there is something young men can learn there is still a message even for fathers when it has to do with the business of transformation it is everyone's business are we together so there is no arrival mentality in church there is no tell them in church when he speaks it is with one voice he's speaking but the message is diverging to three categories of people there is something a father will hear through this sermon that a child will not hear do you know you can listen to a sermon that was preached while you were there but because you were occupying one of these three states there are things you will not hear is that true when you grow some more and listen to the same message you will now hear what befits your level in the spirit so it's possible that while everybody is shouting amen there are people who even though they are crying they really do not understand a bulk of what is being explained because of a certain spiritual state the Bible calls them children then there are young men most times they don't take a, the problem with young men is that they don't have the patience to be thorough young men have a lot of energy and at the instance of a new information they want to practicalize it there is such an itch for performance i write to you young men because you are strong you have ability you have energy and then i write to you fathers because you have experience a father can listen to a particular message and bring out volumes from that message develop that message a child can listen to that message and be hearing something else completely but in any case and by all means make sure you hear what God has for you in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah the quality of your Christian experience will depend on the kind and the degree of encounter that you have with God. We've been examining a series of teachings that are programming us to become victorious believers in Christ. And last week we looked at the mentality of a victor. And all of these teachings are a series line upon line, building upon one another to the intent that we become believers with understanding, with power and stature. Hallelujah. So the quality of your Christian experience, the quality of your faith work depends on the kind of encounters that you have. Please listen very carefully. This is very important. The Bible is full of men and women who had various encounters with God alongside the corresponding empowerments that came from those encounters. Abraham had an encounter with the God of the Bible. It produced faith. Faith so much so he was willing to give up Isaac. Gideon had an encounter. Are we together? Jacob had an encounter. You read all through scripture. You will find men and women who had encounters with God. And the encounters translated into extraordinary Christian living. Solomon had an encounter with the God of the Bible and it translated to an impartation of an understanding heart. He had it through a dream, but the results were seen physically. Hallelujah. 
for someone here it might be that the reason why you have plateaued at the spiritual stage the spiritual level be it as a man of god be it as a businessman be it as a career person is because your life is bankrupt of genuine encounters there are certain heights in the spirit that only encounters can sponsor encounters are ladders they help us to ascend dimensions and realms in the spirit are we together now there are certain mantles and certain graces that depend on certain encounters for you to receive so it is important for you to know that you must place value on spiritual encounters if you truly hunger after God if you hunger after the things of God if you desire that your life becomes a, a tool his workmanship like the Bible says you must crave and cry for encounters what is an encounter right please an encounter is simply an experience an experience that you have with God an encounter is an experience that you have with God that reveals God to you in a in a in a more I'm looking for the best way to express it an encounter reveals God to the believer in in a more structural way in a more personal way a deeper experience simply put that encounters are experiences that crystallize the reality of god in all of his dimensions to the believers this is very important an experience with god i think i have said it here in koinonia that the god you experience is the god you reveal to your world the God you experience is the God you, you reveal to your world. If your Christian experience captures the similitude of a weak God, it is that weakness you will reveal to your world. Are we together now? Yes. The dimension of God that you encounter is the dimension that you reveal to your world. When you encounter the one who is mighty, that might will be imparted upon you and you will reveal that might to your world that means if the believers experience is bankrupt of the supernatural if the believers experience is bankrupt of an ever increasing testimony of the hand of God it only goes to show that there is a serious bankruptcy of encounters hallelujah it is Daniel 11 and verse 32b it says but the people that do know their God they shall be strong and they shall do exploits the people that do know their God they shall be strong and they shall do exploits the people that do know their God they shall be strong and they shall do exploits hallelujah I wrote something down here that I want you to to put down according to Exodus chapter 6 from verse 1 to 3 God reveals himself to men dimensionally God reveals himself to men dimensionally that means no matter how much you love God no matter how much you seek God you cannot know all of God in a moment so if I ask you, do you know God? You will say yes. What you are really saying is, I know the dimension of God that has been revealed to me so far. God reveals himself, right, please, to men dimensionally. And the dimension of God you encounter becomes the direction of your exploits. The dimension of God you encounter becomes the direction of your exploits. If you encounter a healing God, your exploits will not be in the area of prosperity. Your exploit is limited to the dimension of God that you encounter. If you encounter a prosperous God, it will not translate to healing and signs and wonders. If you encounter a merciful God, it will not translate into wisdom in your life. That means the dimension of God you encounter becomes the direction of your exploits.
Please listen very carefully. It is the reason why in spite of our knowledge of God, there might still be areas in our lives where it looks like we, have, we do not even know God. Look at what Paul said. At the zenith of his apostolic ministry, he said that I may know him. Question. What do we have till today, even as matured believers, we continue to explore the Pauline epistles. I hope you know what you call the Pauline epistles was a man's contemplation, his understanding by the Holy Ghost. Yet Paul, who wrote two thirds of the New Testament, here's what he had to say about his life, that I may know him. There were still other dimensions he did not know. And the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, he says, being made conformable even unto his death. These were other dimensions that Paul was saying, listen, even me, I am yet to explore this. We live in a world where we pride ourselves that we know God as though we have exhausted everything to know in God. You can know a healing God, but there are very, very elementary aspects of healing that you may know. And you see that there are the healing ministry in his strength does not speak in your life because there are still virgin dimensions of healing in God that you can learn. Even the talk about prosperity, increase the anointing. Let me tell you the truth. It is true that we have pressed into certain dimensions of God, but I submit to you, based on the curriculum that God has earmarked for our generation, as far as learning him is concerned, we are still a long way to go. A long way to go. And there are certain levels of revival that depend on our exhausting these curriculums in a hurry, so that we are able to use that truth and that body of knowledge that the Bible calls marvelous light. Marvelous light. Marvelous light. Marvelous light. Hallelujah. The patriarchs knew something that, about God that we do not yet know. That is why we are yet to see their results. What did Joshua know that made him to speak to the sun to stand still? Can you replicate it today? If your answer is no, it is, you know, most times when we study the Bible, dimensions that look too difficult, we just trivialize it and say it is unnecessary. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It's like someone who says driving is unnecessary because you tried learning and you found out it was so hard. As hard as driving can be to you, there are people who do Formula One. They run as if they want to die. Am I right? And they still win. There are people who literally play around with cars and you think a car is a toy they are playing around because they have mastered the mechanics of driving. Whereas there are those who, there are even among those who drive, there are those who cannot drive a truck. Am I right on that? There are many, many, many Nigerians that fail driving tests when they go abroad. Am I right? Respectfully speaking, they may have been driving for a long time, making mistakes and surviving it by themselves. And they believe, some of them even have their, 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 their drivers professionally in Nigeria. But as soon as they go abroad, they fail the test many times and then they have to learn again. Then they start learning that, wow, there are still some things I need to learn. There are many programs here that even if you are a professional, in Africa and Nigeria, when you go overseas, you are still made to have refresher courses. Am I right? Because they presume that there are certain things you do not know. That is the attitude that the believer must have as far as encounters are concerned. That there is still something about God I do not know. Apostle, I'm called into the prophetic. What makes you believe that you are a prophet? Well, I prophesied to somebody and it was correct. Is that all you know about the prophetic? Get back to the place of encounters. There is still a lot you need to know. Apostle, what do you know about the apostolic ministry? Well, I'm, I mean, I'm functioning in the apostolic ministry. With respect to what? What is the standard? What is the reference? What is the marking script? Tonight's teaching is to provoke and to challenge us to desire and press for encounters. 
in addition to all the things that God has been teaching us, I want to teach you something about encounters tonight that will change your life and to put you in a position where your Christian experience begins to produce extraordinary results. Because hear me, without encounters, your life will become and remain ordinary. It takes encounters, genuine encounters with God to rise, to access power with men, power with God. Are you ready for tonight's teaching? I have taught us that an experience with God in the kingdom is the basis for your confidence. The believer's confidence is not based on nothing. The believer's confidence, please write, in the kingdom is based on your encounter with God. An experience with God is the basis for your confidence in the future, in, in the kingdom. Your life and your future will depend on the confidence that is derived from your encounters. Write that down, please. Your life and even your future will depend on the confidence that comes from your encounters. There are men you see who it looks like they do not fear. And you are wondering, is it that you are not afraid of life? They dare life with a level of confidence that is almost disturbing. Let me tell you, that confidence was not intrinsic within them. It was outsourced and derived from the excellency of their encounters. How dare you stand before Goliath except that you have met the God of the Bible? How dare you stand before Pharaoh and challenge him that you are advocating an exodus of about 2.5 million people? Can I tell you, many of us are not aware of the kinds of giants we will meet on our mountains. There is no mountain in destiny that is empty. If you meet an empty mountain, wake up because you are dreaming. Every mountain already has giants. Did you hear what I said? There is no mountain that has children. Every mountain has giants. They sent the 12 spies and they went and returned. They said, truly, we saw everything. We took of the fruits. The land is flowing with milk and honey. But we met strange people there. The Anakims. These guys were giants. And they said, we were like them. We were like grasshoppers. Only two men in that generation entered. Caleb and Joshua you need an experience with God man of God you want to do ministry you do not know the kinds of challenges that are standing in front of you waiting programmed by the enemy and sincerely just the reality of life you need an encounter with God to embolden you to give you the audacity it takes to do the things that you have to do this is true for ministry. This is true for businesses. Settle it once and for all. Ladies and gentlemen, when God gives you a promised land, hear me, it is not without giants. There are giants on every man's promised land. The art of dispossessing those giants is predicated upon the confidence that your encounters produce. There are people who are bold like lions. I'm not talking about empty bold face that, that ends people in shame and misery and embarrassment. I'm talking about, it says the righteous are as bold as a lion. There is something about God that when you see, when you hear, when you know, nothing in life moves you again. Are we together? Now, according to scripture and for our teaching tonight i want to teach you two levels of encounters please write there are two levels of encounters that you must press for you must press for beginning from today tonight and for the rest of your life there are two levels of encounters that the bible provides for the believer to contend for to press for if we must access power if we must access wisdom and grace if we must access the fortification it takes to last to have longevity of impact we need these two kinds of encounters number one the first dimension of encounters that we need is encounters by the word. Please write, encounters by the word. You can put in bracket light from scripture. 
this is the first kind of encounter that everyone who will do exploits for God must have consistently so the encounter that comes by the word is not a one-off experience I will tell you the difference between the two encounters after I explain them to you this is the chiefest of all encounters that believers must desire this kind of encounter can be a daily encounter pending on your press and your passion encounters by the word light from scripture first samuel chapter 3 and verse 21 first samuel chapter 3 and verse 21 and the lord appeared again in shiloh for the lord revealed himself to samuel in shiloh by the word of the lord the lord revealed himself revealed himself revealed himself but he used the word to reveal himself do not forget the object of the revelation was the lord but he used the medium of the word to reveal himself god can reveal himself through the word and himself means his wisdom himself means his power himself means his favor are we together himself means your prophetic blueprint in him everything that is contained in god can be revealed to the believer via an encounter by the word light from scripture i hope you know that scripture on its own does not give you revelation do you believe that you can open the bible ladies and gentlemen and read it like a christian book or like some novel and not get anything from it until light there is light that is hidden in the verses of scripture there is light that is hidden in the parables of scripture there is light that is hidden in the prophecies of scripture until that light leaps out of scripture you have not had an encounter what you call bible study is your exploring scripture until an encounter is established Jesus spoke and he said a lot of coded statements and the people who sat at his crusade some of them left angry it was too hard for them many times you see the disciples who come and say please explain this thing to us listen ladies and gentlemen the word of God was so designed or scripture was so designed that hidden in these stories you read is a mystery some of these mysteries are about you that you cannot see is it not in your bible when when isaiah said the spirit of the lord is upon me he himself did not understand the extent of what he was talking about he just wrote holy men wrote as they were inspired of the holy ghost are you learning now when jesus came the Bible says in Luke chapter 4, he found the place. You don't find till you search. He found the place. That means Jesus at age 12, he was telling the scribes, what do you know about the Messiah who should come? He was finding a place. Jesus himself needed an encounter with scripture to find the place where it was written. He opened the book and found. The Bible did not say he opened the book and went there. He found by searching. The place where it was written concerning him leave verse 17 that means there is a place in this Bible where it was written concerning you it's not your name that was written there but the code of your destiny is hiding there listen please believe what I'm telling you a day will come you will open the Bible and you will know that what was written nobody has fulfilled it yet I know you will not believe it because you are not in the Bible days but it is not everything written here that has been fulfilled. There are things the prophets wrote that is about you, about your destiny. You will not find Nigeria as Nigeria here. You will not find Koinonia as Koinonia here, but it is here. That is the mysterious thing about the scripture. Encounters open your portion to you, like so that you will see. Listen, Hagar was crying with her son having been banished by by uh what's her name now abraham's wife sarah the bible says she was in the desert there was water in the desert an oasis there but she could not see 
until she cried unto the Lord and the Bible says the Lord heard the voice of the young lad and when he spoke to her and told her to go back and submit to her mistress the Bible says her eyes were open and she saw an oasis you do not know the treasures that are hidden here. Let me tell you, when the day that light from scripture comes to you, huh, you, can, you can have out of a sentence, only two words will come out. And that's when you will know that it, it is the entire verse is for you, but two words will come out that are not even connected to the verse. Listen, let me teach you something tonight. There is the doctrinal composition of scripture and there is the prophetic composition of scripture. This is where theologians miss it, respectfully speaking. Are we together? The Bible from from a historic standpoint is a book of archaeology a book of literature a book of history are we together a documentation of events past like many other books only that this is religious and spiritual in context but then to the believer in christ there is the doctrinal composition of scripture that means contained within scripture is a methodical arrangement of doctrine comes from the latin word doctrina a body of truth that empowers a disciple to look like his master do you understand that now but there is the prophetic composition of scripture this is where you can read a scripture like jesus wept now contextually he was speaking about lazarus but it can come as a revelation to you that has nothing to do with lazarus light from scripture let me show you an example. Give us Galatians chapter 2 from verse 1 and 2. Galatians 2, 1 and 2. Paul is speaking now. Watch this. Then 14 years after I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and took Titus with me also, verse 2. It says, I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately to them which are of reputation. Now, hold on. From a doctrinal standpoint, this is the apostle giving his journey. Are we together? But I want you to read the first six words of verse 2. Ready? One, two, read. One more time. One more time. You can be in a place of Bible study and only those six words come out. I went up by revelation. That means men rise, be, it takes beyond desire. We go up, we rise dimensions in the spirit. The Holy Ghost will connect it to you with the scripture that says, come up hither and I will show you. And you will see a meaning from that scripture that only you will understand. It is not a doctrine, but it is a ladder for you to climb and excel. On the strength of that light, a dimension of exploit is open up to you. And when you tell people the scriptural basis, they will read it and sometimes we angry they will say you are lying i've read what you read but they did not see what you have seen light from scripture listen i know what i'm saying oh there are no masters but there are people who have been engracing areas when it has to do with encounters believe me i know what i'm saying hmm. so you will see someone teaching and he will bring a scripture that does not make sense but wait to see the result that comes out of that revelation just because you have knowledge does not mean you have light no light is revelation that comes from knowledge Ephesians 1 let me show you are we Bible students pray in the spirit while we turn there Ephesians 1 from verse 17 Amen. Do you know, for someone tonight, the kind of passion God is putting in your heart, you will go back and you will open your Bible. It will no longer be trying to finish verses or trying to finish. There is, you will start searching for it. There is something for me. There is a word for me. There are many of you who in the place of prayer, certain words will come. It's not all the scripture that will come. Just one word. You can be praying in the spirit and the only word you will hear is rest. You will think you understand what was said. These are spirit communications. You are having an encounter by the word. So you go and find where rest was written and you will think that rest just means a state of not doing anything. 
No. That rest to you may be the end of all struggles. That rest to you may be the end of all afflictions. Give it to us. 117. Let's read together. Read it slowly and try as much as you can by the Spirit to use your mind as you read. Ready? That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Keep that scripture there. You went to school. Wisdom and revelation in the knowledge. So where is it found? That, that means from that knowledge, you will still open it up. There is wisdom from the knowledge. There is revelation from the knowledge. You can carry the knowledge. It's the same thing as carrying a phone, a pack of phone. You know, you bought a gadget and then it's wrapped and you carry it. That's how knowledge is. Within that pack is the phone. Within that pack is the charger. Within that pack is the manual. You can carry the phone and when they say, show me your phone, you can lift that which you got. You are right, but you are wrong. You are right in that it is true there is a phone inside. But you are wrong because you are not going to put the pack on your ears to walk. So you can be carrying a pack of phone forever. Saying, listen, all those who have phones, stand up and you will stand up. But for years, all you are holding is a pack. So Paul says, beyond the knowledge that you have, there is wisdom in it. There is revelation in it. And he's saying, pray. pray revelation in the knowledge of him so the first thing you need is that knowledge but when it comes you don't stop there where is the wisdom for instance you will read a scripture and a story the knowledge is that story but where is the wisdom where is the revelation the power is in the wisdom the power is in the revelation Hallelujah. Verse 18. It says, The eyes of your understanding being enlightened. Look at the things you will know from that knowledge. Number one, when the eyes of your understanding are enlightened from that knowledge, you will know the hope of your calling is hidden in that story. You will know the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints. They are all hidden there. But if you just read it as a story, you will just read it as Pauline epistle full stop knowledge without wisdom without revelation is someone learning light from scripture I've shared with you the story but for the sake of those who have not heard my eyes will be open to this encounter dimension in a vision so I am having this vision and I'm seeing a giant like a gate very big ancient gate and then that gate had smaller doors like smaller boxes like how a post office the you know the old context of our post office boxes and there were scriptures that were written on every one of the boxes and it was opening and closing opening and closing several of them and every time the box opened light will come from it and I did not understand what that vision meant until the Spirit of God told me that every one of those scriptures written that is knowledge but the light the grace to defend it the revelation that comes with power is the light that comes out of it so you can be quoting scripture remember my story about the man carrying a phone for 10 years you can be carrying a, a phone in its pack and never enjoy the blessings there why because it must be unboxed am i right and when it is unboxed you must know how to combine it to work the phone may most likely be dead or not charged enough you must know how to use the charger to plug the charger and then use the manual to operate the gadget you can be holding a phone that is of a lesser quality uh, or someone can be holding a phone that is of a lesser quality than yours but that other person can navigate and manipulate that phone in a way that you will stand you almost want to throw your phone and it is higher in quality the difference is that from that pack they have opened and they have learned what to use inside the greatest healing evangelist in the world and the least all use the same scripture 
the greatest healing evangelist and the least all believe that is the same Holy Spirit working so what is the difference what is the difference between say for instance a great healing evangelist crusade Renhard Bonke these were men who read the same scripture there is hardly any scripture shared by those men that it was your first time seeing and some of us for instance can be masters in the area of revelation and you stand before these men and they will read a simple scripture you will help them finish the scripture yet you cannot command the result that they got from the scripture the difference is an encounter light came from it to them ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1 and 2 let's read together please give it to us and he said unto me son of man stand upon thy feet and i will speak unto you let's read verse two together ready one to read and the spirit entered into me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet and i heard him that spake unto me the spirit entered when he spake did the bible not say the entrance of thy word not the reading of it the entrance so the word can be personified it can enter a man the entrance of your word giveth light. The reading of it prepares you to receive light. It does not give light. No. Mm -mm. Is someone learning? There have been scriptures that I read for all my life. And I read it and read it and read it. I could not see certain things there. Aside from maybe just the doctrinal content, the theological presentation, or the contextual presentation of that scripture. From a doctrinal standpoint, when you read the Bible, you read contextually and you draw the lesson as revealed in the scripture. When you study systematic theology, they teach you to use scripture to compare scripture. Because in the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter is established. Are we together now? You allow the Bible to interpret itself. But when you get to the prophetic dimension, it will be unwise to believe that all that is contained in scripture is just the doctrinal composition. The Bible is a spiritual book. As much as it is a historic material, as much as it's a theological manual, am I together? Am I, are we together? The prophetic dimension of scripture cannot be gotten. Your transformation and having a theological basis gives you an edge. Please listen carefully. The theological basis contextual understanding of scripture from a doctrinal standpoint it prepares your mind to even be able to derive the prophetic meaning but let me tell you the truth there is scripture speaking to believers but there is light from scripture speaking to you that will not apply to any other person encounters is someone learning so for instance God's servant, Bishop David Oedeko, would tell you that he was studying his, his scripture and in the Pauline epistles, he says that um, he that cometh from above, or the epistles generally, he that cometh from above is above all. You've read that scripture, but it came as light to him and he said it is far above the gospel, really. Far above mentality, you would hear him say. And he's been able to prove it with his life now you can copy it and say far above mentality but to you it is just somebody's testimony it has become the same thing as what you are reading here so you must stay until light comes for you are we together you would hear him say for instance that he studied on on, on you know and found the keys you know, after reading the books of the Copelands on prosperity and he found the key and spin and say, yeah, I can never be poor. You turn around like that and you find out that absolutely nothing happens because you are just reading a man's story until you get to the scripture and light opens. The scripture God will show you will be far. It may not even be a finance scripture at all. For instance, for you, the key to your prosperity can come in John 3.16. That is a classic salvation scripture. But God can turn it around and bring forth light. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There are so many things you can bring out there. Love, the world, giving, believing, 
life, all of them can be put and rearranged again the way that only your eyes can see. And from that scripture, a conglomerate can come up. And when people ask you and say, what empowered your result? You will tell them an encounter with John 3, 16. And the evangelist will say, I was preaching before you were born. I have exhausted that scripture. It is called light from scripture. Say light. Please shout it. Say light. Light from scripture. Light from scripture. Light from scripture light from scripture do you know the holy spirit is so the word of god is so is so is so rich full of light that do you know for somebody the secret to your longevity can just come by reading genealogies not even i shall not die the holy ghost can just take you to begin to read adam i mean seth the son of adam the son of god and that's it and to everybody that is just genealogy that was documented but for you light will come from it are we together yes for someone god can just use the books of the bible to teach you influence why were there two women whose names were captured as books of the bible mary was not there the mother of jesus sarah was not there the matriarch of the covenant and yet there were two ordinary women that can be a revelation for you that no matter your lowly estate you can rise to a point where you edge yourself are you seeing light from scripture someone can just read the book of esther and the book of ruth every one of these two women the number one they started from their lowly estate for ruth it was even a complicated issue her marriage her husband died children died you would think there was such a generational cause on her and yet she 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 accessed light until the Bible is now named after her. So you can rise up from that light and say in the name of Jesus, I will edge my relevance for the kingdom in the sands of time. And all of a sudden, from that scripture, a foundation will come up. From that scripture, a prophetic prayer intercessory ministry will come up. From that standpoint, a healing ministry will come up. And when people ask you, you will say, I don't know why my father named me Esther. But one day I was reading the book of Esther and I stopped seeing the queen. I saw myself. Please help them. The assignment of revelation is to change the historic scenery and put you there. All of a sudden you will see that where the disciples were, they suddenly vanish in your mind. And you are the one there walking with Jesus and the Lord walking with them. You are no longer looking at Galilee. You are no longer looking at Nazareth. You are looking at Abuja and Nigeria and America. The Lord walking with them. Now to someone who is not you, it does not make sense. But light has come to you. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? This is how people use scripture to change their world. Just quoting and reciting will leave you and end you in disappointment. Believe me. It is now from a, the, the way that you access light from scripture is to start by being a student of scripture. Are we together? Even if you do not understand doctrine, start by studying it even if it's just as a historic material. That initiation is said, draw unto me and I will draw unto you. Take the step like the prodigal son and you have initiated the process that brings light from scripture. There are many scriptures. You check my Bible and there are all kinds of blue barrel, this one, star this one. I will, you will see me with arrows as if I'm trying to build a house, connect it to one scripture and write one small scripture, verse 5. And I start it so that I don't forget. These are all products of scriptural connections. I shared with you my encounter in the Renard Bonke Crusade. We're getting to the second dimension. But that while that encounter was happening, I was caught up in the spirit, seeing a bird, the Holy Spirit now, just soaring. Two scriptures just came to me immediately. Genesis chapter 1, 1 and 2. 
in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth so there is creation it says and the earth was without form it was void and darkness was upon the face of the deep here was the scripture for me and the Spirit of God moved 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 not the Spirit of God was around the Spirit of God moved allowed access upon the face of the water that means every time there is trouble before you speak verify that the holy ghost is there first speaking without god had to patiently wait for the holy ghost to move before he spoke and it came by revelation that the union of the movement of the spirit and the spoken word is what creates the miraculous today this that you see is a product of that revelation so when I say in the name of Jesus, let doors be open and you will see testimonies with all humility. It is not just because a man is powerful. There is a, an intelligent encounter construct in my spirit that sponsors that speaking. Are we together? The man, Papa Kenneth Copeland, he so studied the blessing that in his simplicity of expression, it became such a revelation in his heart. He would hardly make a statement without saying, the, you check his Bible and you will see, I mean, all kinds of attachments across that Bible. He so meditated on the blessing, it entered his spirit. He will share many scriptures to you that you will see as basic, sometimes annoyingly basic, but the results that, them, that show. I have listened to many, many of Reinhard Bonke's teachings. I have listened to many, many of Billy Graham's teachings. I'm a student of history. I'm a student of revival. I remember one time studying T.L. Osborne's materials and I was just trying to find out, my goodness, do you know, history and technology did not do justice to capture the manifestation of the spirit in the life of these people we just have a few documents but my goodness if god opened your eyes or history allows you or technology allows you to see the extent of the impact of these people today we have social media everything can be captured so they can see the extent of the workings of god in your life but those petrarchs did not have that privilege when you read the Bible and read what happened with Jesus and what happened with the apostles, you will think all that the Bible documents is all that happened. That's not all. John chapter 20 and verse 31 is there in your Bible. It says many miracles. Give us 30, 30, not 31, 30. John 20, 30. Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples. Read on. Which are not written in this book. Only God knows what else happened that were not written in this book. We know water turning to wine because it was written. We know Lazarus. We only know three dead people who came back to life in the ministry of Jesus. But only God knows how many more. We know the centurion's daughter. We know the widow at Nain's son. And we know Lazarus. But only God knows how. How many more? encounter by the word can you lay your hands on your head in one minute and cry from the depth of your heart light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light my life light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord light me lord me Lord. Me, Lord. Man of God, pray. Me, Lord. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened. Light me, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Listen. There are people here who are running businesses now you can read all of your educational materials 
respectfully speaking and commendably so from Yale and Harvard Stanford Business School all of the business schools but you will search and search and then you will find them suggest strategies so far but one day you will open this mysterious book and while you are searching the Holy Ghost intercepts your search and you will see something you never saw and Isaac sowed in that land and receive that same year you have heard it it's been preached in seminars but it will come as light for you and when I talk about Isaac sowing it will have nothing to do with money and Isaac sowed in that land and received that same year what will come out of that scripture for you is that same year the same year the same year the year a man sows, he can reap that same year. God can give you this as a revelation for speed. That can come for you as a revelation for speed. That there is no delay in your life. The year you sow is the year you reap. The year you sow is the year you reap. The year you sow is the year you reap. That can turn your life and turn your organization forever. Can I tell you the truth? Please, as you are listening to me, let there be a cry in your heart. Baptize me with the spirit of revelation. Baptize me with the spirit of revelation. The assignment of revelation is to open your eyes, to see what God is saying, to open your eyes. You are a man of God. You cannot do end time ministry without revelation. Now, you must be sound, knowing scripture, study to show yourself approved, understand the doctrinal structure of scripture, but by all means, you must access the prophetic dimension of scripture. Just camping around the doctrinal orientation may not suffice. There is still a layer of scripture, the prophetic dimension of scripture. Ah, let someone receive a baptism the baptism of the spirit of revelation you are a teacher of the word I impart that grace upon you may the eyes of your understanding be open in the name of Jesus Christ may the eyes of your understanding be open be enlightened be enlightened be enlightened in the name of Jesus Christ I tell you fire is falling on someone you are receiving the baptism of the spirit of revelation the eyes that see beyond the letters the eyes that see beyond the letters the eyes that see beyond the verses the eyes that see beyond the verses receive it I impart it upon you in the name of Jesus Christ Pray in one minute. hallelujah in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus please sit down fire is falling in this place tonight many of you you have come to a realm in the spirit where God is pulling you pulling you and telling you enough of this nominal Christianity watch this let me show you something let me show you something give us John chapter 5 38 or 39 thank you Jesus the Lord just put this in my spirit now watch this it says and ye have not his word abiding in you for whom ye had sent him ye receive not watch this now 39 it says search the scripture for in them ye think you have eternal life now watch this no matter what revelation you bring out of scripture I need to balance this 
no matter what revelation you bring out of scripture here is the litmus test it says they are they which testify of me if your revelation and your encounter listen to me if your revelation and your encounter with with scripture is bringing you into another experience that is not forming Jesus in your life the devil and a familiar spirit has taken advantage of that scripture I need to say this because I hope you know the Holy Spirit is not the only spirit and every spirit has an advantage over the physical realm even if it's demonic spirits are we together so that please whether you are an usher or not just help those under the anointing there's fire burning in this place God is bringing every time God brings these things it is to confirm his word so whilst whilst don't be distracted this is what he has made out of our lives this is koinonia listen hallelujah the scriptures are they that testify of me because there are many people who in their passion praying and fasting they began to study scripture and familiar spirits came and started manipulating the pages of scripture opening them to dimensions and using scripture to teach them witchcraft using scripture to teach them necromancy using scripture to teach them interactions with strange spirits that are not of god they have come up with several practices respectfully speaking even begun ministry with several practices just because there is a scripture for it in the bible does not mean it is testifying of jesus the litmus test is not just the scripture compliance of what you are saying that at the end of your revelation we must see jesus revealed in all his dimensions in koinonia we say jesus revealed jesus glorified that means if you claim you have had a healing scripture by revelation now we have no right we were not there when god was opening the prophetic dimension this is why the 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 study of scripture first layer a historic study second layer a doctrinal study third layer a prophetic study if you just jump to the prophetic whereas you are not a student of scripture you will most likely encounter familiar spirits the accuracy of that prophet that prophetic navigation is balanced by your doctrinal understanding is someone learning now so you understand the entire frame of the doctrine of scripture it is going to be difficult for any spirit to manipulate and give it a prophetic meaning that is not of christ because doctrine will make you reject that revelation are we together acts chapter 2 and verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine 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 most believers and respectfully speaking if you are called into the apostolic and prophetic ministry can i tell you stop chasing signs and wonders and go and settle to become a student of doctrine once you do not understand scripture from a contextual perspective you have to be vast because you are going to be facing influences it is based on your doctrinal balance that discernment works discernment is directly derived from the health of your doctrinal understanding if you do not understand doctrine there is no even if you understand scripture and you do not understand doctrine you will be misled because the Bible is a prophetic book you can make it speak any language you want I have taught you here in the Bible Satan spoke in the Bible men spoke it from their backslidden state in the bible there were men who spoke before and after their encounters and it's not the same thing they said in the bible god spoke in the bible demons disguise themselves as angels of light so just because you found it in the bible does not mean it is of god listen to me every scripture in the bible is only called the word of god if it reveals christ listen and learn 
Every scripture in the Bible only becomes the word of God when it passes the litmus test of the revelation of Christ. Christ as wisdom, Christ as power, Christ as favor. There are many people who are sound in scripture, but their practices are anti-Christ. The reason is because they focus on the, the prophetic dimension of scripture and ignore doctrine. And that from a child, thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. Am I right on that? Yeah. We must become students of doctrine, where truths of the Scripture are methodically arranged. For instance, when you want to learn doctrine according to Hebrews chapter 6, you will see that the believer's journey, watch this, the believer's journey is made up of six foundational doctrines that if you do not know those doctrines to now begin to explore deeper things in the kingdom will only leave you in confusion the bible arranges six doctrinal foundations that are pillars for the believer are we together the foundation of repentance from dead works faith towards god verse 2 the doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment. These are doctrinal pillars. Now look up please. The gospel, the believer's journey as far as exploring God, you know that the Old Testament came in types and shadows. It was adumbrations, various adumbrations and revelations of Jesus Christ. And when Jesus now showed up as captured in the four synoptic accounts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were all eyewitness accounts according various perspectives. Matthew, for instance, there was a way, an approach that he gave the revelation of Jesus. Are we together? Mark, you notice that Mark focused on the acts of Jesus. There was no, there, there were not too much historic documentation. Mark chapter 1 goes straight into, you will not even know Jesus was born if you depend on Mark alone. It just goes straight into the manifestations. Are we together? This is the beginning of the gospel of Jesus. Does not talk about his life. Just started. And then Luke was the one who took out time to give us a detailed historic view. When you study the account of Luke, it archives the humanity of Jesus meticulously so. And then John talks about his divinity. It starts immediately, John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. You don't find that kind of account in Matthew. You don't find it in Mark. It was John that spoke about the ministry of the Holy Spirit the most. John was the, the synoptic account that captured the ministry of the Holy Spirit from chapter 15, chapter 16. Are we together now? Yes. So when you study the Gospels, they give you the foundation, the birth, the earth work of Jesus, down to his death, his burial, his resurrection. But the Gospel will never give you the revelation of what the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus meant. None of the disciples understood it. It tells you the story. When you want to understand the revelation of Jesus, it's not the gospel you study. You study the epistles, not even the book of Acts. Mm -mm. The study, the theological framework for the believer's stability starts from the book of Romans. When you study it down, are we together? The book of Acts and the book of the Revelation are two peculiar books. They will not give you doctrinal accuracy. No. Because the book of Revelation was a man's revelation of Jesus Christ. And it says, right. And these were written to the seven churches in Asia Minor. Are we together now? All the 22 chapters there. Same thing with the book of Acts. But when you now begin, Paul's theological exegesis starts from Romans 1. His mentorship, his real apostolic ministry. Now, Jesus said, it is expedient that I go, that the Comforter will come. Are we together? He says, when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. That means what he was telling them was not yet all truth. The all truth was what Paul began to teach in Ephesians chapter 1. He says, now, this Jesus you know who died, he was exalted, now we have been raised with him. It was a Pauline epistle that helped the believer to know the implication of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. 
and the implication to the believer it was Paul who brought us into the knowledge of the gifts of the Spirit we never knew that the Holy Spirit even had gifts it was Paul that brought it and arranged it it was Paul that opened us up to the fruit of the Spirit it was Paul that opened us up from a theological standpoint to the subject of warfare Ephesians chapter 6 you see are we together when you read from verse 10, it says, finally, brethren, when he was done teaching the church in Ephesus, he says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then he now opens us up to a mystery. He says, put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Jesus did not open us to this, but he told us that the Holy Spirit is going to come. Is the Greek expression, alos paracletus the paraclet the one who is of the same kind he will come to become an extension of his ministry i'm telling you all of this to teach you that you need a doctrinal framework to be able to now start pressing for the prophetic dimension of the word so there is a historic dimension of the word to give you a general appreciation of scripture events as they happen leading to Jesus Christ the early church are we together now I broke to you that the theology has a number of dimensions that we study there is theology itself from the word theos the study of divinity there is um, there is demonology there is Christology there is soteriology are we together now all of this together there is ecclesiology the study of the church there is eschatology the study of the end times all this together so you can study the bible from an educational standpoint and that is profitable the next layer is now studying the bible to understand doctrine the believer's structure for growth and maturity so as a matured believer your maturity is not just in laying hands on people and they fall down your doctrinal understanding you must be able to arrange the bible in a way that makes doctrinal sense from creation to the fall of man are we together now yes down to abraham moses and everything that happened the prophets major and minor are we together yes then you get to the point from Malachi, theologically about a period of 400 years. There was no manifestation of God whatsoever as revealed to men, except the gospel. The gospel comes with John crying like a madman in the wilderness, repent. And it begins the story that leads to Jesus. And then Jesus calling together his disciples who would be mentored to become apostles. The dispensation of the Holy Ghost began officially in Acts chapter 2. And until then, till now, it is still his dispensation. Now, when you study this, then you connect it to Acts, connect it to Revelation. You have a doctrinal understanding of Scripture. Now you are ready for the prophetic dimension where God can bring out meanings that are outside of the doctrinal context to benefit you. And you will not be in error because doctrine protects you. Is someone learning now? This is the danger of just studying one verse random verses today what do i study i feel like psalm 71 verse 1 and you look at it and you want to press you will get a meaning from it that will make you become like a herbalist are we together you now see something ah the urim and the tunim aha so where is the version of that in your own life now you will go and get two things that look like you know and and respectfully speaking is because most people are not doctrinally sound that is why the prophetic dimension of scripture leads to error if you're with me say amen. amen now this is not a call for you to be pointing fingers at people and criticizing people whenever you see people manifest extra biblical practices you owe them your intercession to pray for them where God can grant you access because authority has jurisdiction are we together where it is within your jurisdiction to help them you can correct them teaching them the truth in love the bible talks of truth in love when truth is not in love it does not reveal jesus number two did i welcome you to koinonia this is koinonia <laughs> but dealing with encounters someone is learning
Apostle, I don't know the Bible, but God knows I see. Be careful. Listen to me. I'm about to help you now. God knows I see, and I know that what I see comes to pass. The second dimension of encounters are called visionary encounters or experiences. Please write. So I told you that there are two kinds of encounters that the Bible tells us that believers can have. One is an encounter by the word light from scripture. Number two, visionary encounters or experiences. You may want to put in bracket word-based visionary encounters. And I'll explain to you why I spoke about it being word-based. Visionary encounters generally or experiences. Luke chapter 24. Let's begin our reading from verse 18. Luke 24, 18. Please write and let me have your attention. This is a very sensitive one that is going to be liberating for someone now. Visionary encounters. Now, this is the story of two men who were walking the street of Emmaus. Let's read together. Uh, well, I will just read, but where I want you to, when I want you to join, I'll plead that you join. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast thou not known the things that are come to pass there in these days? 19. And he said unto them, What things? Jesus now appeared to two men. Are we together? Who were walking the streets of Emmaus. They saw him as a stranger and so they were discussing the happenings. What had transpired three days before. And he just assumed, he just, you know, gave an impression like he did not know and he was listening to them. So they were narrating to Jesus now what happened to him. Are we together? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word before God and all the people. Oh my goodness. I can stop here and that sentence, can we can do one week talking about that statement. Look at their testimony of Jesus. A mighty prophet indeed, and a mighty prophet in word. So a true prophet must be sound in deed and word. Are you seeing that now? If you are a mighty prophet indeed alone, you are in trouble. You must be a prophet mighty indeed and mighty in word. First before God, then before all the people. 20. And how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. These guys must be great intelligent people. They know how to get information. I don't know if they were journalists. Look at how precise they were. And how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. 21. Let's hurry up. But we trusted that it had been which should have redeemed Israel. They were expressing their disappointment. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. 22. Yea, is, and certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early about the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, be patient, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels. A vision of angels. What did the angel say? That he was alive. What are your angels saying? The one you saw, what did they say? Many people will tell you, I saw angels. We see what angels say here. Every time angels appear, they testify that he's alive. Whether they appear in a healing ministry, whether they appear in a prophetic ministry, their assignment is to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and validate that he's alive. If your own angelic encounter does not lead to the revelation of the fact that Jesus is alive, go back and verify. Are we learning? 24 and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the women had said but they said they saw they said to him but him they saw not 25 and he said unto them O fools Jesus is replying now and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had spoken Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? 27. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he has expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. He used scriptures to talk about himself. 29. 
The Bible says, and they drew nigh unto the village, whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further, testing their passion, and they constrained him. Listen, you will learn a lot right now. And they constrained him, saying, abide with us, for it is towards evening, and the day is fast spent. And he went in to tarry with them, reading to 32. And it came to pass, while he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave it to them. Let me not create controversy on that statement. I hope you know the one who is breaking this bread is the one who has now resurrected. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread, blessed it, break and gave to them. 31. The Bible says, and their eyes were opened. So they were seen, but they were blind. And they knew him, not they saw him. When your eyes are open in the spirit, is beyond seeing him. You now know him. The purpose of the opening of that eyes of their understanding is to know him, not just to see him. They were already seeing him, but they saw a stranger. But when he opened their eyes, the Bible says they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Look at this, verse 32, the last verse. It says, and they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while he talked to us by the way and while he opened to us the scripture? Write this down, please. Write this down. There are three things that we learn from this visionary encounter that becomes the litmus test. Please, I will. The encounters, visionary encounters, are broken into many facets. I'm not doing that tonight. Hopefully, we'll have another series maybe on dreams, visions, and then we'll teach that. But you know, there is what you call a dream. A dream is often called in the Bible, the vision of a night. Are we together? Then there are visions. Then there are trances. The Bible shows us these three. All right, are we together? Trances, visions, dreams. It shall come to pass in the last days, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. Are we together? So we know that there are trances, there are visions, and there are dreams. But there are three things that you can use to test any visionary encounter. Visionary encounters are simply supernatural encounters where you are transported to a realm beyond the physical realm and you are shown different levels of spiritual realities. Now, I have a teaching on the spirit realm. We'll soon have it before the year wraps up, so I don't want to go ahead of myself. But let me just give you just a background to understand this. You see, the spirit realm is an environment just like the natural realm. Are we together now? The spirit realm is a lot more superior to the natural realm. If you have the privilege to be caught up in the spirit and you look at earth, it just looks like a vapor. That's what the Bible says. This wall, as thick as this building is, from the realm of the spirit, all you will see is just like a vapor. Are we together now? Yes, the frailty of this realm with respect to the realm of the spirit. And then there are many differences between the natural realm and the spirit realm. For instance, in the realm of the spirit, I do not have to talk to you to communicate my thoughts to you. There is transference of thoughts. Are we together now? Yes. But in this physical realm, except God shows you, you cannot know what is in my heart till I verbalize it. Number two, in the physical realm, there is time and distance. In the realm of the spirit, that reality does not exist. It can be compressed. In a moment, you can be somewhere. If I need to walk from here to the back of that auditorium, I will need to walk physically, taking progressive steps. In the realm of the spirit, I am there immediately. Now, in the physical realm, the only way I know is by learning or by experimentation. But in the realm of the spirit, I can have the impulse of becoming that thing that I want to know about and suddenly transfer the knowledge from it to me. These are differences between the realm of the spirit and the physical realm. However, the realm of the spirit does not just mean 
God's domain. It is a realm that is accessible to all spirits. Demon spirits, familiar spirits, the Holy Spirit. So just because you were caught up with the realm in the realm of the spirit, visionary encounters mandate that a spirit must be an, the agency that transports you there. Whether it is a demon spirit through divination, are we together? Or the Holy Spirit now having a godly encounter. And the advantage of the realm of the spirit is that in the realm of the spirit, there is the possibility of going into yesterday and tomorrow. In the physical realm, you cannot go into yesterday. In fact, what you call tomorrow is only today. What you really have is today. Am I right? Today was yesterday's tomorrow. Today was yesterday's future. Yesterday when you mentioned future, today was part of it. So what you really call the future, uh, from biblical intelligence, is just a mirage. The only thing you really have is today. The only way you can enter your future is when the future becomes your today. You, you get what I'm explaining now? Yes. But in the realm of the spirit, you can be caught up into yesterday. You can be caught up into tomorrow, literally. These are some of the differences. Now, three things. Let's look at it very quickly. Three things happen to the men in Emmaus that becomes a lesson for us to judge spiritual experiences, whether they be dreams, whether they be trances, whether they be visions. Number one, I wrote here still on that point too, that the first thing that happened to the people is that the encounter that they had with Jesus, it focused on Jesus and it brought them growth and understanding. Verse 27. The first thing that we need to learn is that their encounter was centered on Jesus and it brought them growth, it brought them understanding. Luke 24, now, verse 27. The Bible says, I'm beginning at Moses and all the prophets. He, being Jesus now, expounded unto him all things in the scripture concerning himself. That means no matter what your visionary encounter is, you don't have to see Jesus. No matter what it is, at the end of it, it should reveal Jesus. It should translate to your spiritual growth and bring understanding to you. Is someone learning? So number one, the encounter focused on Jesus and brought them growth and understanding. Number two, the encounter did not violate scripture. Verse 25, that although it was Jesus himself they met, hallelujah, the encounter did not violate scripture. He said unto them, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. 26 now. He says, ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? Now, 27, you will understand. He says, I'm beginning from Moses and all the prophets he expounded to them in all scripture. That means even Jesus appearing to them did not neglect scripture. There are many encounters that make believers to ignore scripture. And they say, for me, I know what I saw. I do not need scripture. That is already an error. Even Jesus, when he appeared, he made reference to scripture. Are we together? Yes. The encounter did not violate scriptures. Number three, the third test is that the encounter, which is very important, the encounter affected their hearts and affected their passion. The encounter affected their hearts and affected their passion. Verse 29 to 32. 29 to 32. But they constrained him saying, look at this. These guys were on their way going to Emmaus, but they meet this stranger and when he began to expound scripture, they pleaded with him, don't leave us. They said, abide with us. An encounter that does not lead you to cry and say, Lord, abide with me. The hymn writer says it so beautifully. He says, abide with me. Fast falls the even tide. He says, the darkness deepens. Lord, with me abide. He says, when other helpers fall and comforts flee. He says, help of the helpless. Oh, abide with me. Abide with me. Hallelujah. For it was towards evening 
and the day was far spent and he went in to tarry with them verse 30 look at this and it came to pass as he sat at meat with them they constrained him they brought him closer to them they sat down they were no longer walking in a hurry they had he had camped with them the bible says he blessed it and break it question was it his house was it not their house he came as a visitor look at the kind of honor and they gave he came as a visitor but now he was the one picking the bread blessing it and giving them they had now honored him beyond their feelings he had become the lord of their home verse 31 the bible says their eyes were opened and when the, the assignment of that encounter was fulfilled he vanished does your encounter lead you to be caught to the heart verse 32 i like what they said did our hearts not burn within us when i had that encounter and saw the nations did my heart not burn within me many people have encounters now i i say this respectfully speaking i am amazed and surprised at many people who will say they see angels all the time and i'm not being sarcastic they see jesus all the time and we check there is no burning of the heart there is no passion towards the things of god no we have a right to vet that encounter from the lens of scripture i have had the honor of seeing jesus it took me more than one year for me to recover i was not myself again nothing else in this life made sense again because of that encounter so when people say they saw him even in heaven they don't see jesus that frequently go and read your bible heaven we need to be careful and i'm saying this from a standpoint of love I, I will not i love the body of christ i'm not one of the people that pride in the downfall of people we are wiser and and we are more mature than that and i'm praying that the body of christ progressively comes to a place of maturity so when god shows greater light it is for the advantage of the body not to be able to compare and contrast no that is childishness the purpose of growth and revelation is to edify the whole body are we together Generally speaking, when the love component is absent, whether in your correcting the body, in your communicating exegesis of scripture, you have defaulted because even faith works by love. Truth works by love. Knowledge works by love. Knowledge is not the zenith of transformation. The zenith of transformation is love. This may be a lesson for somebody to learn because there are so many preachers with a lot of zeal saying a lot of things and hoping they are pointing and correcting the body. Never forget the love component. Never forget the love component. If you end up tearing people down and try, you, whether you are right or not is not the issue. The love component is what makes you believable. The love component is the difference between you. If you now try to demonstrate superiority of understanding, it is not the vastness of knowledge that demonstrates that. It is the presence of love. Is someone learning? Very, very important. So their hearts born within them. Can I tell you? when you have a genuine word-based god kind encounter you will never be the same many of you here have had visions many of you here have had revelations and because of our obsession for exploring the spirit realm we no longer care the effect of our visions there are people whose spiritual life started going down the day their eyes opened and they started accessing all kinds of things familiar spirits extra biblical activities and they come back and practice have you seen people who will be walking close to a stream in the night and they'll say a voice told them go there you've seen people behave like that you see them walking alone or misbehaving or doing something they can even carry knife and want to kill themselves they will say a voice said it all experiences must submit to the word i repeat all experiences even if it is jesus jesus himself submitted himself to the word here to the men at emmaus all experiences no matter how spectacular no matter how divine when you say you went to heaven submit your encounter of heaven to scripture so that you will verify where you went to are we together yes 
when you say you were caught up and you went somewhere you may be sincere if you've never had experiences in the spirit the realm of the spirit is so vast listen I can if you have never for instance and respectfully so if you've never been to Europe or France or US somebody can stand and Photoshop something behind and just stand and and say he was in front of um, some tower somewhere if you have not been there you don't have the system to verify whether this is just this is just art playing games with your mind or he actually was there so when people speak with audacity about the realm of the spirit outside of scripture there is trouble no matter how mysterious my visions are if you are doctrinally sound you can bring my vision and pieces it and check it against scripture and you will have a right to correct me in love and say i respect the 10 days you did in the spirit but that place you went is not heaven based on the truth that is written here because people have been transported all over the place in the realm of the spirit going to all kinds of place and they are coming back without conviction now again I remind you the purpose of teaching is for growth and maturity some of you are seated here right now and you know where you went to before you came for koinonia verify if it's not that listen if your heart is not leading you to God Oh, apostle hands were laid on me and I started having out of body experiences okay what did you see people come back and they see all kinds of things and Jesus is absent and outside of that experience or they can have a similitude of Jesus but the content of that communication is not consistent with scripture because Satan can appear as an angel of light if Satan appears to you he's not going to come as somebody with a horn as cartoons put it he's matter than that he will come in and call you my dear servant. Do you wear a robe and regalia and you kneel down and say, speak Lord. Because most people do not have doctrinal accuracy. I've met spirits, so I've met demons. And unlike the way people think I've met ugly demons, I've met demons that look like men, strangers. It is at the impulse of revelation and the exercise of authority that their true form is revealed. Yes, that you can meet it, it, smart demons looking like business people, but they are not humans. I mean what I'm saying. If I'm joking, I will tell you I'm joking. If you're with me, say amen. amen. Yes, sir. And now, we need to be careful so that we do not get ourselves emotionally pressured. There are believers today who have not had any, aside from dreams, they've not had any out-of-body experiences. And respectfully speaking, there are circles across the body of Christ that makes it look like once you are not having out-of-body experience, you are a child in the spirit. No, sir. Let's get back to doctrine. You see, eh? knowing scripture delivers us from a lot of spiritual childishness. When you are ignorant of the word, you will market a lot of, you know, it shouldn't be. There is nowhere in scripture where out of body encounters is the biblical index for growth. There are four index, biblical indices that make for growth. I have taught you. Number one is your love life. Number two is your degree of conformity to the image and the character of the Christ in experience. Number three is the outworking of the power of God in and through your life. Are we together? And then, of course, your level of transformation. So I need to tell you this, believers, be at rest. There is so much pressure to experience realities that are purported, especially by the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. So we have many people who get angry. That's why people tell lies. Someone will just come and say, I'm seeing just so that they can respect. Because if as a man of God, we are five and four say they are seeing all the time. And then meet the fifth one who is also praying. I'm not seeing anything. Chances are excellent you will not invite me for a program. So the only way I have to join is to tell you I'm seeing something. No. No. Ladies and gentlemen, if you never see anything in your life, you can have encounters with the integrity of scripture. And out of that encounter, you will walk wonders, manifestations of the spirit. A generation 
whose focus completely goes to out-of-body experiences is a generation that will almost be lost already. Doctrine gives balance to everything. The Word of God brings, gives balance to everything. There are many, many appearances of Jesus to men, supposedly. When you vet it from the lens of Scripture and doctrine, you will find out that it was the devil disguising itself. Are we together? When the angel appeared to Mary, what was the content of the discussion? It was still a revelation of Jesus. These men were talking about angels, same thing. Every time, angels do not have a personal ministry of their own. Their ministry is derived from the ministry of the saints. Are we together now? They excel in strength, serving the purposes of God. So that you need to know what to cast. If you get up in the morning and you have dreams and visions, Apostle, I was sitting and the next thing I saw something quickly. Let your mind go to scripture. Use the lens of scripture and begin to judge all you saw and heard. I have taught you, it is written, is greater than I went. It is written, is greater than I saw. It is written, is greater than I heard. You can use it, is written to change what you saw. You, you can use it, is written to change what you heard. Apostle, I saw that my ministry has gone down. You are right based on that vision perhaps it's a revelation of tragedy satan is programming now use it is written your victory in christ as written and revealed to you by the spirit to now change that narrative when prophet isaiah met hezekiah and said put your house in order you will not leave he said all right god bless you prophet i respect you you go just leave me alone with god hebrews chapter 1 God who in sundry times and diverse manner spake to us in time past through the prophets hath in this last days, verse 2, spoken to us through his son whom he had appointed to be heir of how many things? All things. All things. Let's even read it to verse 3. By whom also, leave verse 2, let me finish verse 2. By whom also he had made the walls. Let's read verse 3 together if you are a believer. Ready? One to read. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. All things means all experiences too. Upholding all things by the word of his power. So all my experiences, no matter what they are, I gather them together and bring them through the filter of scripture. And I begin to edit the ones that are not word compliant and throw them with joy. Do you know, for many of you who have followed Papa Hagen of Blessed Memory, if you follow Papa Hagen's ministry, especially when he begins to move by the Spirit ministering, it is amazing how humble that man is and how, how disciplined he is to make sure his visions and his experiences are word compliant. You will see him prophesying and you will stop in the middle of his prophecy and say, no, 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 I reject that that is not consistent with scripture then you will continue prophesying that means he's not ashamed to say look i am human and i'm evolving in accuracy and if for any reason i capture what is inconsistent with the word of god i will cancel it in your presence before i continue hallelujah this where men void of ego void of pride they were determined to see the purity of the counsel of God as revealed in scripture that it comes to men. Listen to me. I, I respectfully tell you, the church in Africa, the church in Nigeria, we are doing well and God is granting us grace. I think the area where we need to come into compliance is a restoration of doctrine and a restoration of the supremacy of the word of God above all prophetic, apostolic, evangelical, pastoral experiences. Until we get to a point where we become students of doctrine and we get to a point where we respect the supremacy of the word above gifts, above experiences, there's going to be a serious problem. I've had many visions. There are many visions that led to the birthing of Koinonia. But the basis upon which we do what we do, it, it is written. Not where I went to. When I speak about my visionary encounters that led to ministry, they are only supporting structures. It is not because of those visions I'm doing what I'm doing now. Are we together? It is because I found in scripture the place written concerning me, and the role that koinonia has to play 
it says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit let it abide with you all he was speaking to the whole church not individuals so we must we must be restored to doctrinal accuracy and now with all due respect this is where we need to applaud and respect what we call with all due respect what we call the orthodox circles you know pentecostals and charismatics were quick to talk about we are say oh there's no manifestation of the spirit but you doctrinal accuracy at least at the level that they can you find that there is there is structure and understanding of doctrine but pentecostals how do you say i'm not serious when somebody is falling down it doesn't matter by what influence i can say a lot of nonsense and once i wrap it up with in jesus name and somebody is shouting it seems to justify so you find out that there is a lot of charismatism without methodical growth and maturity after three four five years in koinonia for instance believers still stunted the works of the flesh still alive no transformation no conformity no love no doctrinal accuracy no it ought not to be so. Is someone learning? However, visionary experiences are powerful and wonderful. They do something to your spirit man. Do not reject them. They are also a kind of experience and God desires to bring it to his people. As a man of God, upon the strength of visionary experiences, once your life is word based, you do not fear supernatural experiences. You, you see me walk in the spirit as I minister to people, maybe during the miracle services. These things come because of the advantage. Once you have the foundation of the word, you do not need to fear visionary experiences because the word of God remains the confirmer. There are many things I see beyond the things I say. Some of them are unnecessary. The wisdom of, of scripture, for instance, says do not rebuke an elder in public. So if God shows me something about someone and that person is considered an elder, I will not announce it and speak here because it will bring more disaster to God's people than it will profit them. That's the advantage of scripture. Are we together now? If I call out a man and his wife, for instance, by prophecy and through the, the gift of word of knowledge and all of this, and if I see that there is an issue that can cause problem in their home and then it can spoil their name and their image, the wisdom of scripture mandates that we have been given the ministry of reconciliation. I rather wrap it up and tell them, come and see me in the office or see me somewhere not just to announce their issue and cause trouble they may be saved but you have created more damage especially in this social media world so the wisdom of scripture helps you to dispense visions with balance are you getting the point now if you see everything you if you say everything you see you have not grown in the spirit The real spirituality is not in the scene. It's the discipline to sieve out what comes from your mouth, to ensure that it ministers grace to the hearers, the Bible says. Is someone learning? Let's wrap up quickly. Let me give you three results you get from pressing for encounters. There are three results that you get from pressing for encounters when a man decides to press for encounters and now i want you to be very sensitive i sense that while i'm mentioning this there will be impartations there are people who have come here with their hearts open some of you are in ministry you may be in you may be outside maybe in zaria following across the globe please i'd like you to be sensitive for these next few minutes that we have because i believe that there is a hearing of faith. As you are hearing, there are activations happening within your spirit man to empower you to be a believer that returns with results. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Result number one, the first result that you experience when you begin to press for encounters by the word and then visionary encounters is an impartation of the spirit of faith. An impartation of the spirit of faith please write an impartation of the spirit of faith what does that mean 
the confidence to live out your destiny the confidence to live out the purposes of God in your life the confidence to dare life without fear is a product of genuine encounters just write for reference we may not read it but write for reference Daniel chapter 3 from 15 down to 30 it documents the story of three Hebrew boys Shadrach Meshach and Abednego you know the story and the burning uh, furnace experience this gentleman had such an encounter that built confidence within them even though they were in a strange land and they told the king they said oh king we will not bow we will not bow we love you we respect you we've been taught to respect authority but we will not bow to you our God they said is able to deliver us and he will but they said even if he does not deliver us just know it for a certainty that will not bow to you now the king is angry and he says really this is what you are telling me my people come and make the fire seven times hotter the Bible says Nebuchadnezzar was angry they made the fire seven times hotter to the point that those who threw them in were burned to death by that fire and as soon as they arrived there, confidence, the Bible says they became four immediately. The Lord is nigh them that call upon him. Four of them, their conviction had produced result. And that they saw, were there not three men who were thrown in? Two miracles happened there, or three. Number one, the Bible says these were men that the fire had no power over. There was no smell of smoke or burning, just like the burning bush number two the second thing that happened was their chains and everything was loosed immediately they were walking freely in the furnace and number three they saw one who looked like the son of god nebuchadnezzar said he answered and said the form of the fourth is like the son of god encounters encounters let me show you one last scripture Acts chapter 4 from verse 29 to 31 and now oh Lord remember this when they healed the man at gate beautiful and they threatened them to not preach in that name again the Bible says they returned to their company and they began to pray this was the content of the prayer and now Lord behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servant that with all boldness they may speak your word 30 by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of your holy child next verse please the bible says and when they had prayed hallelujah the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled with the holy ghost and they spake the word of god with boldness they did business with boldness they did ministry with boldness they confronted ancestral powers and all kinds of yokes with boldness it takes more than reading a book to be bold courage and boldness is not about shouting it's about being firm in your conviction even in the midst of negating circumstances and oppositions i know whom i have believed and I am persuaded, he said, that he is able to commit, to keep that which is committed to him against that day. These guys had encounters with God and even at the point of martyrdom, they would not deny Jesus. Bible history tells us how many of them were killed, inverted, put in a transverse session and all of them died with joy. Many of them smiling. The hymn writers, the hymns that we sing today, many of those hymn writers died on account of their faith. They were given a chance. It's in your Bible. They said there were others who refused to receive their death back to life just to prove their conviction about God. The Bible joined all of them and called them people of faith. In fact, it calls them elders. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen, the days that are before us, will demand people not just of godliness not just of character but people of courage what happens to you when you are threatened when your life is threatened on account of the gospel what happens to you when you are threatened to say you must give bribe in the office otherwise they are going to fire you do you have an encounter that tells you i rather lose my job 
like the three Hebrew boys. I hope you know at the back end of every miracle is on bending trust. Number two. What is the second result that comes with pressing for encounters? Supernatural empowerment to demonstrate the might and the power of God to your world. Supernatural empowerment to demonstrate the might and the power of God to your world. I like this. Supernatural empowerment to demonstrate the might and the power of God to your world. I believe in the supernatural. John 4 48. Jesus was speaking and he said, Except ye see signs and wonders, he said, Ye will not believe. A popular scripture here, Romans 15 and verse 19. Romans 15 and verse 19. 15 19. Through mighty signs and wonders, and by the power of the Spirit of God, he says, So that from Jerusalem and round about unto Illyricum, I have fully preached the gospel. The gospel is not fully preached until the power dimension is captured in the gospel. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, he says, for it is the power of God unto salvation. He says the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God, he says again, is not in word, but in power, the demonstration of power. Encounters bring to the life of the believer supernatural empowerment to demonstrate the might and the power of God to our world. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, having encountered Jesus for a period of three and a half years, he left them with a promise. He says, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen, we need power. Settle it once and for all. Power is not for preachers. Power is not for apostles and prophets. Power is for believers. He said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power. I have taught you here. It takes power to excel in business. It takes power to be wealthy and remain wealthy for the kingdom. He says there is something called the power to prosper. It takes power to stand upon the truth of God's word. Warding of all the yokes of darkness that daily continue to scheme themselves to bring you down. I hope you know that there are forces mandated by hell at every given point in your life and your Christian experience, you are a project in the kingdom of darkness. Let me repeat it if you do not hear. Let me tell you the truth. The Bible says the whole world lieth in wickedness. For as long as you are alive and you are vowed with your life to serve the purposes of the kingdom, there are demons and spirits assigned to you. Their assignment is to bring you down and to make sure that the counsel of the Lord does not stand in your life, in your ministry. You will be joking to believe that there are no spirits assigned against Koinonia or against Joshua Selman. But thanks be to God, which causes us always to triumph mama you need power so that the devil does not make a shipwreck out of your children man of God you need power without power listen to me things will go down in your life and you will be surprised businessman you need power you can buy and sell and make financial decisions but hear me there are spirits the king of Tyre will manipulate the economy to make you lose so that you cannot sponsor the church it takes power. Can I tell you, the way demons plague our world today, it, it used to be people did not pray, respectfully speaking. It was not a prayer point for a woman to get pregnant and give birth to a child. But now it has, people get married and the next project is prayer for the next one month because you are not even sure. You just watch and see. No, it takes power. It takes power that as a woman you lay your hands and say I will not only give birth my womb will not produce an arm robber my womb will not produce a devil it will not produce a demon kings will come out of my loins is someone learning supernatural empowerment you need power to live in today's world 
encounters bring power one day you get up you just touch a part of your body and you see some swelling coming you would think he's just a little boy then it begins to grow then it begins to grow in two weeks it has grown to be twice the size of your tie and they tell you ah, 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 ah. you have 10 more days to live in the name of Jesus I declare over anyone here if there is any stranger roaming around your body and around your life everything that has not been planted by my father by the power of the Holy Ghost I take it out of your body now I take it out of your business now out of your ministry now listen the Bible says while men slept farmers came to sow they sowed wheat they sowed good business they came and they sowed a great evangelical ministry but while men slept while men slept you are not the only one holding seeds there are spirits holding seeds to come and plant seeds of discord in your church your organization if you keep quiet and you are bankrupt of power you will keep watching your life go down hallelujah you see business partners who have been in business and alliance for many years just when good things are about to happen here comes this wicked sower called the devil he will sow a seed push this one out and that's the end of the business Lipsin, let me tell you the truth i know what i'm saying you know without power you will not survive the days that are before us favor wants to come to you the devil will manipulate a man to say you see that lady please do not bless her i don't i have a problem with her mother what is the lady's business with your trouble with the mother every wrong ears that listen every everyone who wants to speak wrongly to your destiny help us so that they will not help you i call upon my god to silence them now hallelujah hallelujah the wife of Herod when they were preparing to crucify Jesus the wife of Herod went to sleep and she had a dream she got up and called her husband she says see take your hands away from this man I have seen in a dream that he's innocent even though in this case Jesus allowed himself because it was the hidden wisdom of God so that you will be crucified and in his death you will bring many sons to glory but the woman because of her heart she called her husband and said don't fight this man don't fight this man the power of God can rest upon you and grant you wisdom Power does not just mean signs and wonders alone. Power translates to wisdom. Sometimes you want to speak and the restraining power, keep quiet. That silence is what can make you a CEO because they are waiting for who does not have emotional intelligence to speak. And you want to speak, but the Holy Ghost restrains you. And you keep quiet and they say, the one who is silent, please assume the office tomorrow. Do you not know it takes power to keep quiet? in this noisy world there are people who will pay people millions of naira to walk close to them if they understand their ability to keep quiet hmm. we are wrapping up oh listen to me because something is about to land upon your life you didn't come here tonight to waste your time are we together now yes the bible says when a man faints in life what God gives him is not encouragement. He giveth power to the faint. That means if you are fainting, what you lack is power. Is that true? That if you turn aside in the day of battle, how many of you have seen, listen, to the military with all due respect, when army runs away in battle, there is a name they call it, and there are, there are punishments that are met because they violate their oath to be able to defend the nation. That sometimes even at the face of death, these people stand and valiantly fight. The believer was never designed to run away. He said, haven't done all to stand. Stand. It takes power to stand. Even if you have to stand alone. You are in a family of 30 people. Everybody is an unbeliever. 
and prophecy has come that is a new season but who is that one man if the men are not serious God will raise one woman like Deborah and now you are going to stand you will stand the standing of men and the standing of women at the same time haven't done all to stand it takes power to stand and speak and declare and pray and fast and push until prophecy comes to pass many of you have come here for service tonight genuinely lacking power you are exhausted in your spirit work is half of the year already and some of you you've gassed out in business in life welcome to the house where you are refilled when there was no more oil the lamp stopped burning the lamp did not spoil it only stopped because there was no oil for some of you your lamp is still there your ideas are still there your ministry is still there your business is still there the only problem is that the oil has finished i come by the grace of god as a privileged them that sell let there be oil in your lamp let there be oil in your lamp let there be oil in your lamp fresh oil upon your head fresh oil upon your lamp let it burn like never before there's a song that says give me oil in my lamp let it keep me burning give me oil in ministry let me keep moving give me oil upon my gift give me oil upon my business give me oil upon my family i am a mother of five children give me oil the grace to keep pushing give me oil let me keep praying give me oil let me keep fasting give me oil let me keep studying convenient or not takes more than desire encounters provide a platform for empowerment listen i'm wrapping up solomon was a man who was now appointed as a young man to be king over god's people he was bankrupt of wisdom and understanding but the Bible tells us that after he burned several offerings in the night he had a dream the vision of a night and he had an encounter with the God of the Bible and he said Solomon you have called my attention through your sacrifice what should I do for you and he said I am a young man and you have given me this responsibility over your people I am ignorant I am limited in knowledge he said grant unto your host, your servant an understanding heart and God was so pleased the Bible says and he said because you have not asked for material things nor the life of your enemies he says I will grant unto you an understanding heart but alongside I will give you riches wealth and honor like never before grant you the capacity to discern judgment Solomon wakes up from that sleep and you will think it was sleep like never before that means when men sleep your sleep is supposed to be a platform for impartation not fear you don't lie down and wake up more tired than you were before you lay down because all kinds of wicked spirits were looking for you no if a man can receive an impartation in sleep if jesus himself slept that means sleep can refresh he giveth his beloved sleep that i should sleep and wake up more anointed than I was when I slept because in that sleep it will be encounters of the spirit revelations and mysteries being made known unto me that when I wake up I have the plan for the next 10 years for the ministry for the company can I tell you the truth I don't know if this experience has happened to you there are times you step into the, the presence of God to pray and when the blueprint of your destiny is about to be revealed you fall asleep immediately this is not sleep of carelessness this is Adam's kind of sleep so that something will come out of you that's why religion is dangerous you go to a place of prayer and sleep begins there is sleep of laziness it's called slumber there is sleep where God is putting you down because something a vision needs to come out of you yes sir for reasons you cannot explain you lie down and in a moment you are gone and you wake up then the secret was revealed unto Daniel Daniel said oh king you're about to kill all of us no allow me go and sleep something happens when men sleep and the Bible says when he went he said just allow me give me one night to sleep by tomorrow I'll wake up with your answer and when Daniel went he said oh God you who gave sleep as a mystery for impartation let me lie down is sleep is not only for your physical health it affects your spirit man are we together 
I lay me down and I slept. He said, I wake, not because it was morning. He said, the Lord sustained me. That means he came to me in my sleep and did something to me. Reprogrammed me like surgery while I went to bed. Are we together now? When you're about to perform a, a, a surgical, a major surgery on a patient, what do they do to the patients? They give them anesthesia and then sometimes they sleep or at least they are, not, they are not as active as they should be within that place and then they numb everything they should numb around them and they begin to work. The patient wakes up sometimes and they are done. Things have been removed, things have been put in. I don't know, it's like I'm prophesying to someone that tonight, like never before, that this week is about to start, your sleep will be all way prophetic. All way prophetic all way prophetic i say to you from the depth of my heart all way prophetic direction supernatural direction in the name of jesus impartations of the spirit upon you that as soon as your eyes close they are open in the spirit and god begins to tell you this is how business will be in the next 10 years this is how ministry will be in the next five years Receive it in the name of Jesus. We're about to pray. Our time is gone. Let me give you the last. What is the last result and the final result? When a man contends for encounters, number three, your exploits, write this and we'll pray. Your exploits will cause men to glorify Jesus and believe in him. Your exploits. This is a very important part of our press for encounters. Your exploits in every area of life, the manifestations of the glory and the power of God in your life will cause men to glorify Jesus and to believe in him. John chapter 20, chapter 20, 30 and 31, and we'll wrap up. John 20, 30 and 31, and many other signs truly did jesus in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book let's read 31 together ready one to read but these are written that ye might believe that jesus is the christ the son of god and that believing ye might have life through his name daniel 6 25 to 27. what is the third result of encounters praise comes from your life praise comes from your destiny then king darius this was darius with daniel in the lion's den after daniel came out unhurt because the angel of the lord came to protect him darius was so impacted by that encounter he wrote to all people watch this nations languages that dwell in all the earth peace be multiplied unto you I make a decree, Darius is saying, that in every dominion of my kingdom, men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. Verse 27, he delivereth and rescueth. How did he know that? Through a man's exploits. And he walketh signs and wonders in heaven and in the earth, who had delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. I'm praying for someone here. What God will begin to do in your life from this night and all through this week, people who have not given their life to Christ for years, your family members that have vowed not to serve your God by reason of what my God will begin to do in your life, you will draw many to Jesus. You will draw many to Jesus. Many will sing new songs because of your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. Keep standing. We're about to pray. Men can press for encounters experiences of the God kind by the word and through supernatural visionary encounters leading to the abundance of the impartation of the spirit of faith supernatural empowerment for exploits in our world today and finally granting your life access to reveal the glory of God that men can come to the saving knowledge of Jesus through the excellency, the wonder-working power, the effulgence of the life of God through you. Are you ready to pray? I'd like you to pray these three things in your life. 
number one you are praying from the depth of your heart a baptism of the spirit of faith number two supernatural empowerment for kingdom exploits number three Lord through my life be glorified someone open your mouth and pray pray for the next one minute pray for the next one minute you have heard the word of the Lord you are in ministry pray businessman pray politician pray father pray mother pray young man and woman pray in the name of Jesus the son of the living God from my life be glorified my life glorified through koinonia global be glorified that we remain an ever increasing testament of your power your wisdom and your grace Hallelujah. Many of you have come tonight and you have been part of this spiritual family because of the wonder working power of God and the testimonies that you have heard. The Lord has used these testimonies to herald his name across the nations, bringing many to Jesus. Can I tell you the truth? Publicity is easy in the presence of results. You will have to talk too much and manipulate and beg and cry whether in business or ministry in the absence of genuine result. Results have a voice. You can increase the volume. It can speak so loud that the nations hear from any point. There is no hospital that is too far for sick people. No. Mm -mm. When patients complain about a hospital, it is either ill-equipped or they are not sick enough. No hospital is too far for a genuine patient get state-of-the-art equipment and put there even if it is in a village that aircraft cannot go people would rather go that far than to have their patients die when you become like that hospital gentiles will come to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising are we together let me make the altar call jesus is the subject of our discussion his glory and his grace is the reason why we teach and do what we do at the end of our lives it's not all about miracles and signs and wonders but pointing men to jesus and revealing him through our lives the two men at emmaus their point of deliverance and their point of lifting came when they acknowledged and they honored jesus i'm going to make an altar call right now two in one there is somebody for sure you are in this place and you are saying I came to church tonight apostle and while I heard you speak the Holy Spirit is beckoning on me to make my ways right it is such a beautiful thing to win that war and with humility of heart surrender to the Lordship of Jesus and then I'm also praying for those who are saying apostle I, I have made this commitment and this decision before but right now like never before i really want to rededicate my life to jesus i'm going to make a call one to five all the overflows outside our zaria family global family wherever you are those who are within these premises please you make your way to the front as i count one to five boldly without fear you are coming to the throne of grace i begin my counting now one come come god bless you God bless you. Are you celebrating them as they come to Jesus? Though we are few, you're surrounded by many who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Holy is the Lord. Come to Jesus. Holy still thinking about it or you are running to Jesus come two more counts and I begin to pray shame the devil over your life tonight come young and old rich poor white black everything in between come come to Jesus apostle you don't know how my life has been you are still welcome the Holy Spirit is a master of breathing over darkness and chaos. He's able to bring light. Come. Come. 
who knows whether it's a preacher that is on his way coming maybe you're a potential man of god maybe it is esther on her way coming deborah on her way coming elijah on his way coming come hallelujah thank you so much for making this noble decision you do not you cannot ex, ex, um, you know i cannot begin to explain the joy in my heart every time i call people now you see most people do this just out of religion just to show like you are serious with god but believe me when you have a revelation of that which christ has done and you know the power it takes to serve people the life of god everything changes these guys you see a translation is happening this moment from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. It's a spiritual reality and I thank you all for your courage, young and old. Thank you so much for defying any sense of embarrassment to come to Jesus. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Let me request that you lift your hands, please, as a sign of surrender, high above your head. This is to Jesus, not to Joshua Selman, not to Koinonia, not to social media. This is to Jesus, the lover of your soul. And those in Zaria making that decision those across the globe all the viewing centers and all every expression every home wherever it is I want you to make this decision lift your right hand then your home your office you're watching by way of rebroadcast it is never too late to make it right with Jesus say after me Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus tonight I believe in you that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power say it of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever, I am a child of God. Amen. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for these precious ones. They have come declaring their need for you. And thank you because you declared in your word that as many who will come to you, you will in no wise cast away. By the authority of scripture, I declare their sins forgiven. And I call you this day and this moment, bona fide recipients of the life of God. I call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, empowered to walk in victory. From tonight, you go from glory to glory and grace to grace. I plant a new and a fresh love for Jesus in your heart. And I pray in Jesus' name that you continue to learn and grow until you become mighty men and women of God to the glory of Jesus Christ. I bless you and I decree and declare that there is no going back. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you. Please may I request for those of you in front, our counselors are waving the placard. I want you to please move in concert. The counselors will have a word with you just for a minute or two and you'll be back to your seat. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Let's celebrate Jesus for salvation. Celebrate Jesus for salvation. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I just felt stirred in my heart to do this before we wrap up. I want to say a very big thank you to all of you, particularly for those who are worshiping for the first time and for those who have traveled from outside of Abuja who are amazed and humbled week in, week out. Um, people make sacrifices you cannot imagine traveling from the farthest of places. There are people who are part of this spiritual family from Lagos, from across the globe, and they are not just following online. They literally are here every week. How they do it, I do not know. We do not take your love and your sacrifice for granted. And that is why we make sure that every service is an experience that reveals Jesus, empowers you, and repositions you for a life of victory. And I declare that this week, you will see the wonder-working power of Jesus. And for all of us together, I declare that you are blessed. You go from glory to glory. You walk in victory. You are a mighty, mighty tool for the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
and I declare in the name of Jesus that every challenge that you came here with by the power that raised Christ from the dead I declare that the resurrected King is resurrecting you in the name of Jesus you are blessed you are honored you are favored you are lifted you are empowered by the Spirit and according to this teaching I declare that this week is a week of encounters word-based encounters visionary encounters in the mighty name of Jesus we pray thank you very much once again we'll share the grace and then please greet someone by your left and right on your way out let's share the grace in fellowship the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you